So I reckon there's probably two areas to focus on when you're looking at intro, that's type and animation. Roll the intro. around here my name is Jake Rich and the channel is all about travel creativity and inspiration and today I'm gonna to be doing a tutorial on how you guys can slay your YouTube intros in 2019 the main purpose of the introduction is to kind of capture someone's attention and to somewhat summarize your channel into like 15 seconds when I first started making channel intros I just went on to Google searched up motion graphics template and then I look at the old one And then all I did was fill in some parameters in After Effects and voila, I had my new intro. Anyway, fast forward like three years down the track and I'm actually able to use After Effects. Actually, there's not even After Effects in this. This is 100% created on Premiere Pro. Um, so for, these, for those of you guys that aren't using this software, I'm gonna have to find another tutorial. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. But let's open up the project window. Let's have a look at type and animation. To create any kind of motion on a simple shape is super easy. So if you can see at the start of this introduction, I have this layer just sliding from left to right. It also goes from slightly um, opaque to 100% or from transparent to opaque. Oh no, <laughs> you get what I mean. You can, it gets to m more of the color. <laughs> anyway, so by the time that this clip of me kind of kicking the ground, dancing, hits in, there you are, it's like full color and it's coming across. All I've done here, is if I just go over here and if I create a shape, so in my type, I hit the type tool, there we go, bam, type tool there. I just use that to open up the essential graphics window, but right now it's a type layer. I can delete the type layer out and down in this bottom box, I can create a rectangle. See that? Create a rectangle. Um, the, the rectangle is gonna populate onto the page. I'm gonna change the fill over here in the appearance to any color that I want. If I want that color to be like a pinky red color, I just select it there. Then I go down over here and change my, right now you can see I can't really, um, I can't adjust the parameters of the shape, but if I go down and I either hit V on my keyboard, there you go, or I go down here and I click on the selection tool. So it's either V, V or the selection tool, really simple. Now I have access to change the, uh, change the shape really. Sorry if my computer lags as well. Um, Right, so I'm going to just create a shape. I'm going to create this shape um, just to cover. Uh, let's say I want it half of my half of my 16 by 9 frame. Right? I never really do things by perfect numbers. I just do it visually. If you want to perfect the numbers, you know, you could create this shape. Um, how would you even do that? Over here, there's parameters where you could create the perfect shape, which is exactly half of. The window. I'm not going to do that. I'm just freestyling at the moment. We're just going to go over here um, to the to the start of it, plus to zoom in. So I like I'm right at the start of that of that layer there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the shape off off the grid, so you can't see it. If I if I go to fit up here and I just change this to 25%, there you can see I have a big shape there, which is about to come and move over. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to my shape. My shape layer is highlighted the graphic there. And I'm going to go over to here into my effect controls and I'm going to hit on the click on the position toggle animation right there. And as you can see there, it's already set these parameters of minus 8221.9 and 55.8. Right? So that's where we're starting. Now all I have to do is to move my um, timeline over a bit. Let's say I move it here and then um, what I'm going to do is create a another, I'm going to move the actual shape over as well. And you can see at the top there, I think if I hold shift, it will be exactly a straight line. Yeah. Hold shift and I can just go to there, that position and it's created a keyframe. If you can see in here, it has created that second keyframe. So now if I pull my, my, uh, cursor back and hit the space bar, oh my God. created that did that myself, right? Super simple. It's just that one little shape moving over. You can do it with circles, but anyway, whatever. So you can see that's just one sliding panel. The other element that I added in here was an opacity layer. And I think I went up to the opacity, which is just 
up here and I created it from the start of this sequence. It was, I hit, I turned on the opacity and I turned it to zero, right? As the shape's coming in, it's still op opaque, opaque, opaque. Is that even a word? Opaque? Or am I just making that shit up? <laughs> it's transparent, I think. <laughs> it's transparent. And then I'll just, uh, I'll click here and I'll make this 100%. And so then we can see that we're going, there you go, transparent to full. I'll actually go to fit the frame so you can see. Damn! Just adds a little bit more steez. Okay, so that's, that's all I've done. You can do that with any shape. So if you look at my intro, you'll see that there's a few shapes moving, doing the repeat process. Now the next thing we want to look at is type, which is just super simple as well. Um, and let's say I create a word. Um, I think before, you know, if, if you just want your name, whatever, you can do that. But I've obviously like fleshed out a couple of like pillars of my brand, travel, creativity, inspiration, and I've used them in my intro. So let's just click here. Actually, don't click there. We want to create a new layer. We don't want to be adding to that layer. So if I click on just the blank screen, there's another graphics layer. Cool. Um, and what I can do on this blank graphics layer is just write... Um, like legend, oh, far out, don't do that, don't do that, <laughs> just write legend, you dog, you, <laughs> um, now with that, you can obviously change the, uh, type, now type is a big thing, I think, you know, before you just grab any kind of type, spend a little bit of time understanding, I'm going to link a video in the description of this called Helvetica. Watch that and you will understand the importance of a very simple type. Um, you'll start to see it a lot as well. Anyway, so the typeface that I use for my brand is Futura. Um, and to be quite frank with you, there you go, Futura. That's the uh, typeface that I, that I use. I've stolen it from Red Bull. Um, I was doing some brand work with Red Bull started last year, they sent me all their typefaces and I've just been like, you know, this is dope. It looks really nice in bold. It also looks really nice in um, like lowercase. Like if I show that lowercase E and that bold E, dope, like both of those. Anyway, so let's just say I have this as legend lowercase, which I really like, great typeface or legend. Um, yeah, but again, let me highlight, do your research because you don't want to have the exact same typeface as everyone else. I used to use Helvetica and I saw everyone using it. So I wanted to customize my type a little bit so it was more me. So I still like the simplicity of it. Anyway, so we're gonna use legend. And if you didn't know, over here, you've got a line and transform. You can click on these two positions to go vertical center and horizontal center. So now it's directly in the middle. As this transitions moving across this swipe, I want that little legend uh, type. I want my legend type to pop when it hits that point. So all I'm doing is aligning it on the timeline as you can see there. Bang, okay? If I just extend it and I've just made a cut in the type. So it's literally just creating two type layers. And all I've done with mine is very simply added two effects down on the left here. And let's look for the effect called mosaic. There you go, stylize, mosaic. We're gonna grab that and we're gonna chuck it on. And now it basically looks like two pixelated, two just two big pixels, right? You know when you see like blurred out imagery, it's just the mosaic. Um, effect. So now I want to go to the parameters of mosaic because right now I can't see anything but if I go down here here's mosaic and at the moment I've got horizontal and vertical blocks and I can change those parameters to like bigger oh and then as I increase those vertical blocks it starts to make um, the text semi legible so I thought that was a really cool kind of just you know it's it's blurry but it's like you know it, it's, I was like, that's, that's, that's just cool. Like, I just think that's cool. Okay, so now let's animate that, that legend status. So let's say this is the most legible part of it, right? And I've got the key, I've got the horizontal and vertical blocks at 178 and 80. Let's just maybe go to 170 just to see. Yeah, there you go. It's still blurry, but that's essentially the last point that I want before it pops into like super crisp. Legend. Okay, so I go to the very edge of that top clip and I create a keyframe on both my horizontal and my vertical block, right? Then I'm gonna pull this all the way back to the start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it really ille illegible or really, I don't know that's a word, but I'm gonna make it so that you can barely see it. So there you go. And I'm gonna create, I've already created a second keyframe just from changing those parameters. So now over time, 
it's gonna like slowly come into visibility and then pop literally just going those blocks are moving and then it's clear now to add some rotation which was also what I did to look like it was rolling around even though it wasn't it's just wigging out I just got a went down in here and I got a vertical flip oh vertical flip transform vertical flip there you go that's what you want drag that on and now it's gonna be rolling upside down and then flip pop now the other area which I did I sorry I, I like because I did one more thing I started it here which is like the whole size of the text and then all I did was I just scaled down so it looks like it's coming into the frame so let's have a look at that. All we're gonna do is we're gonna scale. So here is 100%, we're gonna turn that on, and then we're gonna go all the way to here at the start of it, and we're gonna scale to let's just say like, let's just say 25. So now, over that time, see how it kind of comes, the one thing is it comes from like, um, that kind of corner, and it's kind of coming in like that. Kind of like that top corner, it's coming out. To get rid of that, if you just want it to be like, middle you have to also scale your position so okay so we know that that's our final position so i'm going to hit position on there and then i'm going to bring this back to the start and i'm probably going to move these here's the thing i can't really see shit <laughs> so oh let's just make it 960 by 540 because that is the, the total center of the frame. So let's have a look. Yeah! <laughs> yes, so we did it. That's sick. So now it's coming from the middle, not from like the side. There we go. And that's it. That is just a simple effect. If you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on how to work with type and how to work with simple animation, do punch the thumbs up button. I look forward to seeing your introductions. Do a little bit of music theory. Make sure you sign up for Epidemic Sound or Music Bed with my affiliate links because that will def it's, it's a great way to um, support me in this channel. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, punch the thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in the next upload Tuesday.